What should a business owner do when customers try to cheat and take advantage of them? Welcome to this episode of the Anabaptist Perspectives podcast. This is an exciting episode because I get to interview my dad, Gary Schrock, and you've been doing construction for a number of years. Uh, you started a business in 2006, had quite a lot of interactions with customers and all kinds of interesting people along the way. So in this episode, we want to dive into some of those stories and see what are lessons we can learn from that. Um, so I, I think the first question that I have for you is you have this biblical principle of a soft answer turns away wrath. Could you tell us a story that illustrates that in your own life? Yeah, there's a few things that come to my mind. And as far as handling a situation like that, the soft answer is definitely the correct way to do it. It seems like when voices raise, things escalate. But it's really interesting to see how the person responds when you just talk in a regular tone and answer them, whatever they're after. Mm. That varies. That varies. And usually it's something that isn't as bad as what they think it is. With a little time, it probably wouldn't be that bad. But a, a, an example for that is, uh, about that, I should say, is people, well, for instance, there's this person that wanted some trusses. Okay, we have a truss plant, and we build trusses for people, roof and floor trusses. He wanted his trusses six foot tall from the bottom to the peak. Mm -hmm. And, and are you for perspective, you're like in you know, on building a house, like the peak yes. is the top of the roof line, basically, of for a house. So he's saying, I want it from here to here that tall. Yeah, from yeah. the ceiling to the peak. Mm -hmm. We want it six foot tall. And that can be because they're matching up a garage or wanting to come underneath something. And there's usually a reason that somebody wants something specific. So we build them custom. And so, therefore, um, we drew it up. And it, he approved it, signed it, said, that's what he wants. So we made them six foot tall. Well, if they go out to the job site and the homeowner comes over there and he said, no, 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 this is wrong. It's supposed to be a six pitch. And so he's calling, he's talking to one of my sons and he's getting a little excited because we built the wrong trusses for him so he was thinking six pitch as in like angle of roof the not how tall roof. they are okay mm -hmm. yeah so you know a six pitch might have been seven foot tall mm -hmm. i don't know but we went according to what he said and my son said well you approved it and you signed the paper well he doesn't look at that paper that's what he said so basically we had something that we could stand on he transferred him on over to me and said dad talk to this man and so he's saying, this is what he wants. We're building the wrong thing. And just to talk to him in a normal tone, it's like, that's okay. Uh, it looks like something here isn't quite what you want. We'll just build you another set, bring him out there tomorrow or the next day, and you can continue on your project. It doesn't have to stop. And it's like, you just pop the balloon. And he can't argue with the problem's been solved. Mm -hmm. We'll just send you some more. And pick the others up, bring them back. We'll sell them to someone cheap. So he's, the, the problem, what he thought was the problem, couldn't argue about it because he's got trusses now. Mm -hmm. And so it's sometimes those real quick things um, to just listen to a person and just say, that's fine. We'll take care of the problem. And they're not expecting that. Mm -hmm. They're expecting a little bit of an argument going on. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So it kind of popped a balloon. So there's other things, you know, that have happened along the way to uh, where people just get upset rather than look at it and see how the problem can be solved. And mm -hmm. times we make mistakes, they make mistakes, but how do we handle the situation? And a soft answer a lot of times takes care of it. Mm -hmm. And so in a scenario like that, this person, it was his fault. I mean, he said this is what he wanted and it's actually not right. Uh, he's probably expecting you to say, oh, we can't work with that and get all upset and things. So you're you're talking about, I mean, you're losing a lot of, you're losing time and money and it's a big hassle for you probably to, to do this. Um, I think that's one of my, my questions 
you know, what is your philosophy for or philosophy? I'm not even sure the right word for it. Your mindset, I suppose, for dealing with people who basically are trying to cheat you or take advantage of you. And maybe that story wasn't necessarily taking advantage, but kind of was because it was this other person's fault. And he said, this is what I wanted. What is your mindset? Like, how, how do you decide how to handle those situations? That That's a hard one because sometimes you know it isn't your fault. I mean, you just know it isn't. And some people don't want to back down and say they're wrong. That That's just so hard. So you have to accept it. You go ahead and do it. And you just move on. Uh, and you have to be willing to lose once in a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I know somebody told me you're just too soft or too kind sometimes. But it has eliminated a lot of problems, a lot of stress. Things escalate and it goes to law, you know, people, if they just don't want to give, mm -hmm. uh, it ends all that. Agree with your adversary quickly and just be mm -hmm. done with it. So sometimes you'll be taken advantage of. You're correct. So I, yeah, I've heard you use that verse in the, in the past, agree with your adversary quickly. And that's something Jesus says in, in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, I think the verse continues on, like, if you don't, you know, you'll be drugged to court and, and et cetera. A number of, it, kind of, it escalates, kind of like what mm -hmm. you're saying. So really a lot of the mindset you use for these things is is to de-escalate it, to keep it from ballooning way out of control and everybody getting mad and, and so forth. I yeah. guess that's a good yeah. way of saying it. Yeah, and then it's usually forgotten and over with. Mm -hmm. And I don't really remember much of those situations. And I've heard stories of people that even came to the office and want to work with us. Something happened at a job site. Contractor says it's not his fault. The trust company says it's not their fault. You know, somebody may have got hurt because of a bad structural problem. And so n nobody is claiming fault. And one time there was a, a doctor bill of maybe $1,400. But the contractor wasn't willing to pay for it. It's not his fault. It's the trust company's fault because it wasn't built correctly. This is another trust company. I, this is just a story to show what can happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to take fault and say they were wrong. So even if it's not your fault, sometimes just just go pay the doctor bill. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying, I'm the one in the wrong. And that's where it gets. But the last I heard, that situation there is at $3 million right now. It escalated to? It's at $3 million is the last I've heard with Whoa. a $1,400 doctor bill. And so that's just a case where Whoa. you still have to prove who's at fault. And this thing has grown and grown. But if you pay the doctor bill, you're saying I'm at fault. Mm -hmm. No, let's take care of the person. Worry about the rest later. Because mm -hmm. they're still trying to find who's fault. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just mm -hmm. take care of it right now mm -hmm. instead of that back mm -hmm. and forth. And so... Almost that's like, an extreme case. That's an extreme case. It, it is, but it but it does illustrate something. And and it seems like you keep coming back to this concept of um, almost like working in peace with with people or um, working in unity, because now in that situ situation with this other company, uh, now they've made a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing you're trying to uh, not <laughs> you're not trying to do that. You're going the other route and say, well, how can we remedy this? How can we restore the relationship, I suppose? Is that a way of saying it? Yeah, just uh, take care of it. Just take care of the problem. Mm -hmm. And what is the problem? And like I said, you might not even be at fault. There's times you just have to willing to take the loss and you move on. We've mm -hmm. done it numerous times, mm -hmm. but it's um, it's worked out. People come back um, because you're able to work together and they have a confidence in that. And so there are benefits to it. And you don't do it just because of business reasons, but because it's the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Another story to answer that question, as far as being taken advantage of, we did have a set of trusses that went out to a job site. They ask, like your room right here, you got knee walls. Um, mm -hmm. It's a story and a half. And so they wanted knee walls a certain height. And we made them that height. And they were actually asking for the very end of the trust to be that height. And so if the very end of the trust is that height, as it goes in, it grows taller, just like here. 
but they told us to make the knee wall this height. So that's what we did. But when they got out there, they're constructing the house. They called back and said, this is something is wrong and this is not going to work. So that's okay. We'll just make those eight trusses and bring them back and just put the new ones on. He said, no, 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 no. We don't have time for that. We're out here. There's eight guys framing. We'll take care of it. We'll make it work. And this is the builder that's saying The builder says that. And well, down the road, we get a bill for $10,000. And that bill was because the trusses weren't right and they had to move their bathroom to get the ceiling height. They had to move it away from the slope ceiling. And so it took some floor space out of their upstairs and they figured X amount of area because the, the contractor made it work. Mm-hmm. Like he said, he would, but we get this. So the homeowner probably went to the builder, the builder on to us. And like I say, here's this components, yeah. just like somebody gets hurt, trust company, you know, this contractor, it gets passed on down the line. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was $1,800 worth of trusses and now we're looking at $10,000. Mm-hmm. So what we did then is um, we figured out how long it would have taken to take that apart paying for the eight guys, figured very, uh, very generously, um, building new trusses, putting them on and getting everything right. It would have had to shut down the job for, you know, a day. So we figured that all together and we come up with around $6,500. So explained that to him, said, this is what we feel would be a a fair number. And we sent him a check for $6,500. And it's like, we had every reason to say that we did it right. Oh, this wow. is where you get taken advantage of yeah. once in a while. Yeah. But I'd say it went from homeowner to contractor down to us. And I don't know what the contractor had to deal with on this, mm. but somebody has to have fault here. And uh, it was one of those cases where you do it and you move on. Never heard another word from him. No way. Never heard really? another word. And then I, I said something to one of my sons. I said, I wonder if we'll ever hear from that contractor again. And my son's on the computer and he said, well, that's fine, dad. He said, I've got a $20,000 roof somewhere in there. That's just a mm-hmm. statement. He said, I got a big roof I'm working on right now from the same contractor. He just sent over another job. No way. And he said, <laughs> quote this roof. And we've done numerous houses for him. Wow. And that's in the background. We've never discussed it. Uh, mm-hmm. It didn't. It hasn't hurt our relationship. And it was a matter wow. of days. We had another had another house. And he so, probably trusts you now in an incredible way because of that. But that's that that's that's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. But yeah, you have to be willing. Uh, but we've been wow. blessed. We've been blessed. And I, I think. We need, we need to just remember that mm-hmm. uh, what we have is because of what God has blessed us with. We need to be accountable. We need to manage what he's provided for us and what is the best way to handle certain situations. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I've been. Uh, that's not always easy. I'll just be straight up front <laughs> with you. <laughs> it's not oh, always yeah. easy, uh, but still felt like that's what we needed to do. Mm-hmm. So. So we talked about your mindset of how, how you decide these things and, and agree with your adversary quickly and um, soft answer turns away wrath. Um, that's in the case of maybe someone trying to take advantage of you or cheat you. Um, what what happens when someone tries to do a kind of business deal that, that is unethical or, or doesn't align with your values um, and tries to manipulate it in, in that way? That you have to be very ready for. Cause it's going to happen. It's not when it happens, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the dishonesty thing. And one of the ways is when people ask about working for cash and, uh, because mm-hmm. you know, kind of save some taxes on their end. We don't have to turn it in on our end. Yeah, it's a great yeah. way to make money. But for us, we've of course chosen not to because it's wrong. And sometimes that's hard for people to understand. One customer said, oh, yes, it is good to be honest. It is so good to be honest. I'm thinking oh, you were just trying to deal, you know, doing a cash deal. Just here. trying to cheat. But and uh, yeah, 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 he yeah. said it's so good to be honest. And it is. Um, 
And I told one person, I said, well, if I cheat the government, how do you know I won't cheat you? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. But the, the sad thing is one time uh, I met a person and he was paying me for his trusses. And I'll just give you the amount. It was like $7,000. Well, we have 9.75% interest. So you mean you like tax on tax that? Tax on our, on okay. our sale. Yeah, so it's, that the, adds up. Then. Not the interest. I should say sales tax. We have 9.75% sales tax. Mm -hmm. And a $7,000 job at almost 10% sales tax would be $700. Mm -hmm. And this pastor asked me when he was doing the cash, he said, can we just do it regular? Just, I'll just pay you cash. And I told him no. Now, I didn't say nothing to him about it, but mm. you don't forget things like that. And if I, I feel like if I would do transactions like that down the road, somebody will make a comment about these Christians are just like everyone else and they'll possibly pop into their mind. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Wow. So-and-so did that for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it, it's a good testimony that really hurt that pastor's testimony to me mm -hmm. uh, that are willing to. And some people probably don't even think about it. They think it's actually fine just to work with cash and, and uh, cheat the government out of the sales tax mm -hmm. um, and probably don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. But the long and short of it is it's it's a right and wrong issue. So mm -hmm. choose to do it right. Um I also, I don't want people to do things to me, so I shouldn't be doing it to them. Um, it's doing to others as you'd want them to do unto you. Um, I don't want anybody to cheat me, so don't be willing to cheat someone else, which here it would be the government. Um, I run into it with lumber brokers sometimes. They'll say, what's the other person's quote? And we'll beat it and let me know what they quoted and we'll do it for less. And I told him I don't do that because uh, I really hate when somebody does that to me. Like if we give a quote somewhere, I don't want, I hate that. But now the lumber brokers I work with, they have confidence that I will not give their number to another mm -hmm. broker. They're going to trust you yeah, in a different yeah. way. See, that's maybe not an issue of you cheated them because there's no, mm -hmm. you're not taking money or whatever, but it's an integrity thing where they know, yeah. hey, I'm not worried that this guy is going to, you know, go behind my back and undercut my price by kind of manipulate, you know, whatever. Um, that's a pretty profound thing because for that broker to realize, well, I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. So why am I asking you to do this? you know, to take advantage of someone else or, or, um, yeah, it, yeah. That's an integrity thing. That's pretty powerful actually. Yeah. Cause that would be feel funny if I'm a broker and you give somebody a price and knowing that they mm -hmm. might take your price somewhere else Feels and always mm. beat you out. Yeah. That'd be hard for the broker in a, in a way, but some of them do that to others. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've actually, I'm trying to think of where I heard that. Maybe it was one of my brokers that, they actually like it because they know that I will not give their price to someone else. And mm -hmm. so they can trust you that I'm not going to go and undercut them. Uh, just small things like that. Actually, mm -hmm. it's almost like a new thinking for some people. Mm -hmm. They're but not going to forget that. Yeah, but yeah. then in the end, they see a benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, they see a benefit. Mm -hmm. So we talked about, you know, people trying to maybe cheat you uh, or... Uh, take advantage of a situation like those people sent you a letter asking for ten thousand dollars and things like that what about a situation where someone just straight up doesn't even pay you and and that's that's that you gave them a we built them a product or something and they're just like see ya, I'm, I'm never paying for that um that feels like it's kind of taking it to a whole nother level yeah, what do you do in a situation like that that one there is another hard one but it's happened to us it's happened to us back more years earlier there wasn't as much work and a lot of a lot of times contractors sometimes they just pay us um force building supplies it's on a monthly thing goes to corporate and all but homeowners we usually get money up front now mm -hmm. because you can be taken advantage of but it did happen one time i'll just kind of answer your 
your question with a story where there's a contractor actually didn't pay. And then I find out that it sounds like he went bankrupt. He's had all kinds of problems. I don't know if people are after him or what. So here he owes money. Of course, I want my money too because it was after the collapse 07, 08, 09, when money was so, oh, yeah. so yeah. valuable because <laughs> it wasn't there. We didn't have work. People weren't building. And I thought, you know, this fella has had a hard time. Sounds like he's in rough shape. Can't get a hold of him. Won't answer his phone. Mm. So I thought if I ever get a hold of him, I'm going to tell him I've forgiven his debt just so he doesn't have to worry about it and that it's it's gone. So I went to, he has a place of business in town where him and another person share an office space. And I decided to go there and see if I can find him. He would just pop in, do some things from time to time at his office. And so I went, his friend that had the other section of this office he was there, so I asked him about this contractor, and he said, I don't know. He in and out sometimes, but I said, well, can I call him? He said, I don't even have his phone number. He said, nobody but his wife has his phone number. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, if he comes back in, have him call me. And sometime later, here he did. He called me, and I told him, I said, I just want to tell you the reason I wanted you to get a hold of me. I wanted to tell you that I forgive your debt. Now, it wasn't a real big amount. I think it was under $2,000. But still, that was a lot back in 08 or 09 mm -hmm. when the economy was bad. And I said, I just want to tell you that I have forgiven this debt and that uh, you don't owe it to me. I know you're having a hard time. And he didn't know what to say, really. So we visited some. I told him, if I walk down the street and I see you, I want to be able to pop into a restaurant and we can sit down and eat lunch together. Hmm. I said, that's how I, ha I have forgiven you and you don't owe it to me anymore. Versus I hear people, next time I see that guy, I'm going to kill him. You mm -hmm. know, you can have that kind of attitude. Yeah. But it was, it, was, it was different and I just felt like that's what I should do. Maybe it isn't like that all the time. But in this situation, I felt I should do that. Well, let's fast forward. Actually, as we hung up, he said, well, I'll tell you what, here's my phone number. You can call me. So now his wife and I had his phone number. <laughs> I found that kind of interesting. Oh my goodness. Nobody <laughs> had his phone number, but me, but and I did. I kept in contact with him uh, over time. But a few years down the road, uh, well, we had an order of trusses from Lowe's and we go to deliver them. It's a garage, porch. Uh, type of thing nothing real big and wouldn't you know our truck pulls up and it's this contractor that used to be a contractor it was his he went from a new house to a double wide basically adding on to it and here it was him and he didn't expect that because he bought them from Lowe's yeah but we built them for Lowe's and so our truck shows up oh my and he called me and he said Gary he said, I never did pay for those trusses and I'm going to pay for them. I said, no. I said, I told you I've forgiven that debt. Then you don't owe it to me. He said, no. He said, I'm going to send a check back with the driver. I'm going to sign a check and it's blank. And when you get it, you fill it out and you tell me how much it is. I want interest and everything put on there for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Just call me back and tell me how much you made it out for. And I said, no, you don't. You don't owe me anything. He said, yes. He said, I want to sleep. Mm. That was his answer. He said, I want to sleep. So I, I guess this has been bothering him some. And he said, I want to sleep at night. And so he did. Truck, the driver comes back, hands me a blank check. I could have wrote on whatever I wanted that to. That is wild. <laughs> so I went back and found the old invoice and I made it out for whatever it was and called him and told him this is how much I made the check for and thanked me and he was he was happy this weight fell off of him wow um, it, it just fell off and hopefully he could sleep after that but for him that was such a a turning point in his life to be able to 
come back to that debt and say, I'm, I will make this right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was important that you don't rob that from someone, even though you did forgive it and he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it was very important for his own. Um, I don't, I don't even <laughs> try and think of the right word, but own peace of mind, I suppose, to come back to that and say, I, I want to take care of this because I, I did the wrong thing here. You know, mm -hmm. that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. So as long and short of it, it's good to work with your customers. Like I said, you are going to be taken advantage of. You will. Uh, but the best thing to do is keep a very, very good testimony with the people you work with, how you handle situations, honesty, integrity. Uh, it all is blended together in one. We're Christians, and that's the way God wants us to live. And so mm. we need to practice that. Not just talk about it, but we do need to practice it. We fail. We make mistakes. Probably times we answer back like we shouldn't. But as a whole, um, to try to do our best to work with people. Mm. And if that means take a loss, you take a loss. Because doing the right thing and the, the, that person is more important than the money. Mm. Is that a fair way of saying mm. Is that kind of how you think about it? Yeah, because it does. It does change it makes people think you know when you do it out of right and wrong um just the different situations that i talked about it it does make people think uh, and it's so different yeah it's almost like it's shocking i, I just i've seen it right where it's just like you pop the balloon <laughs> They don't know what else to say. It's, it just comes to an end wow. in, in different situations. So mm -hmm. um, now say it'd be a lot more money. How would I respond? That would be That'd a little be a different. challenge. That would be a challenge, yeah. you know, because it's easy to say, you know, it's this, this, but still relationships are relationships. And it would be, that one would be a hard one if it would be a lot mm -hmm. uh, of money. That You'd really think that went through, but yeah. you'd have to be, uh, do what the Lord wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Do what the Lord wants you to do. And uh, I feel that, like I said earlier, we've just been so blessed. And uh, don't want to be greedy and just the whole goal of business is to get more, 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 more. That's not the goal. Uh, those that will to be rich fall into many hurtful lusts. And it's it's like I'll climb over whoever I have to honest or dishonest that's what i'm after and i'm going to get that doesn't matter how i get it that that that'd be that's a terrible way to do it mm -hmm. not to have that drive where um that's my whole goal and it business can be a ministry too with employees or with customers mm -hmm. both ways so for those that are watching or listening to this that you know maybe they don't own a business or they're they're an employee or something in a business how do these things apply? It's ten, I'm I'm guessing the principles are are universal. So if, as we close this episode out, can you bring it down to what are the base principles that apply to anybody when it comes to to how they live, how they handle situations like this, where where people do take advantage of them? What would you say to that? Uh, the biggest thing is you have to not just focus on yourself. That, that is that is one thing there. And honesty and integrity speak so loud to people. Somehow they remember if they've been cheated or if you can't trust someone. They don't forget that. But if you are honest and they can totally trust you, um, like I say, employee, business, however, that's probably the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, is that people trust you and know that you're not a selfish person. You're living out what Jesus said, mm -hmm. uh, and you care about mm -hmm. people, not not just not just your business, but you care about people. Yeah, that, that's interesting because I actually had to think. I, this is kind of bizarre, but literally yesterday, I met, um, I ran into a local fellow here, and you and another person from the church. I put a new roof on his barn. It's been like 15 or 20 years ago. And he still remembers that as like, you guys were amazing and I trust you. And like, he just had so many kind words to say about that. I, I had to think about how, how many people have 
a crew come in and put a new roof on their barn and they remember it 15 or 20 years later. But there was, there's just something about how you all lived and walked and, and I don't know, it did, didn't strike me as a particularly unusual job. I mean, it's just okay, you put a roof on, but, but I think that that honesty and integrity and, and you did a good job and uh, that person has still not forgotten that. You know, and it makes you think like how many other stories are like that out there where those, you know, people don't forget how they've been treated and uh, they don't forget when they see something uh, um, that's high integrity, high honesty like that. Yeah, to have people trust you is so valuable uh, that they don't have any concerns or, um, yeah, just little not. Well, uncertainty, but th that they totally trust you. That That mm -hmm. is a very good feeling. I like it when people say, I want a set of trusts. Don't even ask price. Hmm. Uh, that's kind, they know that's kind of nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not uh, say, I'm going to tack on another $100. Wow. And I tell them the same price before or after. And, and, we and they have trust that. you. Yeah, we to, have to that where that. we show up and they just ask, how much is the bill? <laughs> uh, I, I like it when it's that way. They don't even incredible. ask a price. Wow. Uh, now, the extreme situation the extreme is when a contractor gives you five signed checks and put them in your Whoa. drawer and whenever you we do jobs and you deliver them and i'm not around just call me and tell you how much tell me how much you made the check out for and, and you could easily tack on an extra 100 200 dollars you yeah. never know and oh my I actually write all five of them out you know but wow that's no we do incredible there's, there's, trust there's contractor that gives us signed checks for down the road for, and if we run out, he says, I need to get some more to you. <laughs> so I, I like that feeling. That's, that's extreme. I know that's sure. extreme. That doesn't happen just every day, but I like it that way. And I, and I, mm -hmm. and I think it's good that a person looks at us that way. And also we love it when we can look at other people that way too. just have yeah. no uh, worry about it. Just totally trust them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, whether you're employee, owner, um, a anybody like that, just integrity, honesty. Uh, hmm. I thought I'd share that story. That and that is pretty wild, right there. Um, that don't just happen very often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm anything special, but I'm sure well, it probably well, happens but... other places too. But that one there, I never heard of before. It happened to us. Yeah. But you've you've built a. A, a level of trust with him that he just knows, well, if, I mean, of course you're going to be honest, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that only comes from consistently showing that you are, that you do have that level of honesty. Um, and that's a, that's a big deal. Like that person won't forget that, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, there's something about that company. I can trust them, you know? And I think that's a real testimony for, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we're coming from the Mennonite circles here in North America, and a lot of our people have businesses, and that can be a huge testimony of, yeah, they're honest, we can trust them, or it can go the other way. You know, if, if there isn't that level of trust, it can be a pretty serious damper on this Christianity, and people look at that, and I'm not sure about those Christians, because, you know, kind of like the pastor you mentioned earlier, that still kind of blows my mind, you know, and, and maybe he didn't think of it, but yeah. People won't forget when you do something like that. Yeah, see, I still remember that. That's incredible. And other yeah. customers, I don't remember some things, but that there, mm -hmm. remember trying to save seven hundred dollars, and then plus I can do it under the table, mm -hmm. and I can save some money. It's a win-win for everybody. But no, it's it's wrong. Yeah. So, thank you so much for sharing some oh, of your welcome. stories. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for watching this episode of Anabaptist Perspectives on the topic of honesty, integrity, and proper business dealings. If you found this episode interesting, you'll like this one that we did with Kevin Breckbill, which you can find linked below in the description. You can always find all our content over on our website at anabaptistperspectives.org. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next episode.